Please stand and face the church door. Good afternoon. Welcome to all of you celebrating Mass with us in person and online. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday. Today's readings can be found at number 823 in the hymnals. Our celebrant today is Father Hank. Our leaders of song today are Kristen and Chris. Judy is serving as sacristan and Monica is on the tech desk. Jason is our cross-bearer and server. My name is Rachel. Barbara and I are serving as lectors. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Ray Ierkowski, Jane Glennon, and Jessica Kent Watkins. Please take a moment to check that your phones are silenced. If you are listening through the Listen Everywhere system, please use headphones or earbuds. If you need a pair, the ushers can provide them. Please join in now for three rounds of our Jesus Prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, living Son of the living God, help me to know what you want, to want what you want, and to do what you want. Lord Jesus Christ, living Son of the living God, help me to know what you want, to want what you want, and to do what you want. Lord Jesus Christ, living Son of the living God, Help me to know what you want, to want what you want, and to do what you want. During tonight's reading of the Passion, please participate by saying aloud the part of the crowd. Please direct your attention now to the back of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in the resurrection and life. Let us pray. Please elevate your palms. Almighty ever-living God, we ask you to sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem to Bethphage and Bethany 
in the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it, and will send it back at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following him, kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Please join us now in singing our opening song, which can be found at number 283, Hosanna, Son of David. Number 283. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, you caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me?
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Please be seated for the reading of the Passion. And I would ask you at uh, page 283 to read the part of the crowd. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, not during the festival. When he was in Bethany reclining at a table in the house of Simon the leper, 
a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. They were infuriated with her. Let Jesus her alone. Said, Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take this. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went to, out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus, then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even all should have their faith shaken. I am not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I would have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke. And they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and looked around and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said, Peter, Simon, you asleep. Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time 
and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, ha Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, and the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began to say to the bystanders, Once again he denied it. A little later the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. 
Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to honor to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, What then do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with the reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James, and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, 
a distinguished member of the council who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he had learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. <coughs> Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So these 10, ten weeks of a, a call or a gift every week, conversion on Ash Wednesday, and then humility, certainty, zeal, prudence. And last week it was about the plunge. This week it's about stamina. Last week, as we read John 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 4 and forward, we noticed that that was the moment when Jesus said the hour had come. That was it. That was the moment when he realized he was not going to turn back. He was not going to go around it. He was going to go through it. There would be no alternative. He was, as we say, taking that plunge. He's not, coming, he's not going to go around it. He's going to go into it and through it. This week, related to that experience of taking that, that plunge, that irreversible step, that I'd ask you to notice how you had to do that and the grace that God gives you to do that. I'd ask you to link that with this week's notion of stamina. And it's really quite straightforward. The stamina that Jesus needed to take those steps, those irreversible steps, again and again and again. And I would just ask you, maybe if you can keep in the back of your mind this Holy Week, four different times that Jesus did that in his life, the major chapters of Jesus' life. Now we could look at the details in the scripture here today, that time and again, maybe, just maybe in conversation with Herod or Pilate, or he, he could have escaped this thing, but he wasn't going to, time and time again, you know, the way he answers that he gave. But in the broad picture, I'd ask you to notice four times, the four ways in which Jesus took that plunge for our salvation, took that step that was not to be reversed. He went from heaven to earth, he went from earth to the cross, he went from the cross to the grave, and he went from the grave to hell, right? He went from heaven to earth, from earth to the cross, from the cross to the grave, from the grave into hell, and each one of those required him to surrender something in an irreversible or a definite way, right? He, when he went from the, the second reading today, the canonic hymn from Philippians, and I, I hope that people can spend a little bit more time with this, the canonic hymn from Philippians says, though he was in the form of God, he did not deem equality with God as something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, right? So Jesus was in divine form, he did not give up his divinity. Let's be clear about that. He did not surrender his divinity. He surrendered glory. Glory. Infinite, perfect, eternal splendor, right? That's what the condition of glory. Infinite, perfect, eternal splendor. Jesus surrendered glory so that he could come and rescue us. Once he surrendered glory and was one of us, true God and true man, then he surrendered lots and lots of freedom as he went from the earth to the cross. And it reaches a pinnacle, that trip from the earth to the cross, taking that irreversible step. Again, each gospel does it differently, but he surrendered self-determination. He surrendered his dignity. He surrendered so much in that trip from the earth to the cross. And that's the, that's the plunge that we noticed last week, mostly, that when he made that, that non-reversible decision, okay, we're going to go through with this thing, and that's what we hear in the Passion today. He then, when he was on the cross, and they said, could he not bring himself down? Could he not save himself? Could all? No, he took the trip from the cross to the grave. And can we say that God died? It's worth considering that question. But we can say that we know that Jesus died. And he took that step, he took that plunge into the grave. He gave up his life. And then he took that plunge from the grave into hell. It's one of those things that gets past us, 
and he descended into, the, into hell, he descended into the dead, depends on which creed, and there was the harrowing of hell. Friends, the reason I ask you to notice those four separate plunges from heaven to earth, from earth to the cross, from the cross to the grave, from the grave into hell is because it highlights Jesus' stamina. It highlights the stamina that we all need sometimes, not everybody all the time. Maybe this isn't a chapter of life where you do need that stamina. But maybe it's a time of life when you don't or you do. It's hard to say, but I'd ask you just to consider it. When it seems like you have to take one plunge after another after another for the benefit of some other person or yourself, it's difficult. You have to decide to undergo a difficult medical treatment. At the same time you go to undergo a difficult medical treatment, you have to make yourself available for the care and well-being of another person. And at the same time you do that, you have to come to someone else's financial assistance. And then you have to be the good person in the story to take care of someone who's in a really rough patch over and over and over again. Stamina. He gives us that grace. It comes with the territory. I would ask you to notice his stamina, to notice his stamina as an example for our call. And if you are one of those people who feels maybe now or in general that it seems like there's a few too many plunges I'm called to, to, to be dedicated to the well-being of others in a way that seems excessive, and, it's, and I'm committed. And I, if that gets to us sometimes, that's a good sign. But when that happens, I would just ask you to put Jesus right in front of you, turn on your mind's imagination, your spiritual imagination, and just replace the word he for you in the canonic hymn. Look him right in the face. Look him right in the face. Behold him beholding you as you pray, though you were in the form of God, you did not deem equality with God as something to be grasped, but you emptied yourself, and you took the form of a slave, and you rescued me and all my loved ones. Though you were in the form of God, you did not deem equality with God as something to be grasped, but you emptied yourself, and you took the form of a slave, and you rescued me and all my beloved. Is there a way in which now that stamina of his four plunges is a helpful recollection for you? Is there somebody in life where you need to remember, they need to remember, yeah, it gets that way. He gets it like nobody else possibly could. Let's stand for the profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And with confidence we bring our petitions to God. For all of us, for the grace to imitate Jesus' stamina, In answering his call to take another plunge, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For inspired stamina for the leaders of our church and of all human communities, when God wants them to take another plunge, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For good health for our newborns, for fertility for those who seek it, for peace for those nearing eternal life, and for healing for all dealing with distress, addiction, illness, or injury, especially for Harrison, for Jay, for Keith, for Jane and for Logan, as well as for Christine Verone, Ellen Grillo, Rosie Hayes, Tracy Tu, David Eric, 
Gil Gonzalez, Dan Wigand, Tony Ianella, and Ray Ref. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our faithful departed, for all our deceased ones, and for all parishioners who are mourning the loss of a loved one, for all those who have died on today's date, including Jane Glennon and Robert M. Nadon, for all those who have died recently, especially for Vincente Villegres, brother of Cora Rosario, and for John E. Murphy, Jr., father of John E. Murphy III, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ray Iarkowski, for Jane Glennon, and for Jessica Kent Watkins, who are specially remembered at this Mass, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all recently born babies, and for the babies recently born to the families of our parish, especially Abigail Josephine Garlotti, daughter of Albert and Nicole Garlotti, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace everywhere on earth, especially in Ukraine and in the Middle East, and in every human heart, for the intentions written in the Book of Intentions, and for our own personal intentions, which we recall now in silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for consolation for the family members of Ray, Jane, and Jessica, all of whom are here right now, we pray, Hail Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed art thou, thou among women, and, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Now, Our Lady of the Way, pray for St. us. St. Joseph and all of our patron saints, Pray for and we make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, for the passion of your only begotten Son, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to thank you, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples. And he said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory <coughs> of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. We thank you because you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Ray, Jane, and Jessica, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who have been united with your son in death may be one with him in the resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Please welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, the Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Please don't look on our sins. Look instead on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to the everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring us to the everlasting life. Amen. Please join in for our prayer before receiving communion. My Jesus, please deepen my belief that you are present in the blessed sacrament. Help me to love you above all things and to receive you into my soul. Help me to embrace you and to unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join us in singing our communion song, which could be found at number 363, Jesus the Lord, number 363.
Announcements. The Holy Week schedule is in the bulletin and uh, online. It's both in the mass schedule part and it's either now or will in a couple of minutes be on the front page of the website. So it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, including <laughs> rehearsal times for people who need to be here for the liturgies. And also Wednesday night is our uh, getting together online the parish YouTube station with uh, soteriology. It's a big word for the question, wait, why did Jesus have to die? Couldn't he just come and live and have that be the perfect life? And why the death part? Well, it's a thing that's engaged people for centuries, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, so that's Wednesday night, 8 o'clock, uh, Fireside Faith on Parish YouTube. Poor Box this week is to help support the youth group's 30-hour famine coming up in April. Easter flowers, the envelopes are out there. Second collection on the way out the door is for the retired priest. We still need great big cardboard sheets and boxes. Parish cleanup days, April 20th. High school girl senior nominations for Columbia. It's good citizenship award are available. You can still make those until April 1st. And there's a marriage encounter July 19th. So the perception of the person to whom we're praying makes a big difference. If we're just, it, you know, sometimes we get into the, to the rote mode and we're just tossing prayers out into the universe, especially when we feel beat up or something. God's not with us. And what, like, what's God doing? How come God's not paying attention? Well, God is paying attention, and God understands, and Jesus Christ gets it, and we sometimes forget that, and it's important to remember it when we're praying through one too many plunges, right? Where I've made a commitment to do something, to be with someone, to sacrifice this, whatever else it is, and you're thinking like, Lord, come on. He gets it, right? From heaven to earth, from earth to the cross, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to hell, when his job was complete. He gets it. Though you were in the form of God, you did not deem equality with God as something to be grasped, but you emptied yourself of glory and came to rescue us. Huh? Where is it that you need to remember that? He gets your prayer when you feel like you're taking one too many plunges. He understands, and that's the Jesus to whom we pray. And is there somebody else maybe who needs just that gentle reminder, just ever so gentle? Yeah, he gets it when you feel like there's just no more plunge left in you. He gets it. Let us pray. Lord, nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you will call. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. <clears throat> Lord, look, we pray on this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. We go in peace to know, to love, and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing our closing song, which could be found at number 297, O Sacred Head Surrounded, number 297.